evening mass in the tiny village of Kinoli, South Fermanagh. Prayers for a local businessman who was abducted and tortured. I just can't comprehend that any human being would do that to another. You wouldn't do it to an animal. A community in turmoil. A mafia-style gang said to be operating with impunity. I am not prepared to speak and say who it was. Because Why not? Too dangerous, too dangerous. This is a story of brutality, betrayal, and the Northern Irish borderlands. Mr. Lonnie suffered life-changing injuries. And On the evening of the 17th of September, father of six, Kevin Lunny, left work at Quinn Industrial Holdings, QIH, one of Northern Ireland's biggest and most well-known manufacturing conglomerates. The place where Kevin Lunny was taken to as the company director drove up the small lane to his house, two cars boxed him in. He was abducted, brought across the border into the Republic of Ireland, and tortured. This is the area across the border in County Cavan where it's believed Kevin Lunny was taken. The attack was pre-planned. The authorities believe at least 10 people were involved. Locals we spoke to have a good idea who some of the men are. But we're too afraid to talk on camera. Not surprising, given the horrific details of what happened to Kevin Lunny. His leg was broken, his face was cut, and his company initials were carved into his chest. QIH, was it? QIH, yeah. And that was cut into his chest? Mm -hmm. I just can't comprehend that any human being would do that to another. I don't know. You wouldn't do it to an animal. So this is the main substation that supplies into Northern Ireland. Kevin Lunny's brother, also a director at QIA, shows us the wind farm the company once owned. His brother told him that he's convinced that someone was pulling the strings of the gang of thugs who abducted him. It was organized mm. and it was paid for. Yes. You're confident of that? Yeah. These guys don't do anything for nothing. It was basically, I have this job to do this evening. There was no anger involved. It was, I have to do this this evening. And, you know, it was more or less, I have something else to do tomorrow evening. I suppose, Tony, the big question is, why? Let's put it bluntly. It's definitely connected to QAHL. And uh, that's for certain. The attack was carried out by people. The Kevin Lunny attack, albeit the most violent, wasn't the first time a QIH boss was targeted. There have been over 70 examples of harassment, like this arson attack on a family member's car. A catalogue of abuse directed at QIH executives like John McCartan. People shouting at me in the street, people meeting me face to face and carrying direct threats of, uh, of blackmail, harm to my family, harm to my children specifically, harm to my father then written threats delivered to our offices, uh, explicitly warning uh, of our execution. After the attack, the local parish priest took to the pulpit one Sunday and delivered an explosive sermon. He spoke of a powerful kingpin operating above the law in this seemingly tranquil rural community. I now believe that there has been a mafia-style group with its own godfather operating in our region for some time behind the scenes. No one should be, should be untouchable before the law. Does everybody in this community know who you're talking about? A lot of people would have a fair idea of who I was talking about. I who were you talking about? I am not prepared to speak and say who it was. Because Why not? Too dangerous, too dangerous. And so to the big questions, who is the driving force behind the vendetta against QIH executives and why? There's a complex history to all this. To start to get your head around it, you have to go back 46 years to this hole in the ground. A young farmer called Sean Quinn borrowed a hundred pounds from the bank, started digging gravel out of the family farm. From there diversified into cement, from there diversified into almost everything. Sean Quinn came to embody the aspiration, the true grit 
of the people who lived here. Hundreds of families, thousands of people relied on that business and relied on that business in a place where opportunity and jobs did not previously exist. By the mid-2000s, Sean Quinn was the richest man in Ireland. The headlines say it all. But then, the financial crash. Quinn lost billions of euros in a failed financial bet on Anglo-Irish bank shares. And by 2012, he was declared bankrupt. Sean Quinn will get his victory. There were pro-Quinn demonstrations in the area. There were protest songs. A couple of years later, a group of his executives tried to rebuild the company. Sean Quinn wanted back in, but was ultimately excluded. Along with others, felt he'd been stabbed in the back. By 2012, the intimidation of the new directors had begun in earnest, culminating in the abduction of Kevin Lunny, here in happier times with his old boss, Sean Quinn. Lunny is back at home now and recovering well after his ordeal. But, as of yet, there have been no arrests. Quinn has repeatedly denied any part in the intimidation and harassment of the new bosses and was anxious to do the same in relation to the abduction of Kevin Lunny. So, agreed to give us a rare television interview. Did you know about or commission or sanction the abduction and torture of, of, of no, Kevin Lunny? No. no, 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 I didn't. I have no hand, act or part or no knowledge or no gain. I'd have no benefit from doing anything to Kevin Lunny. Kevin Lunny and I were good friends for years. Sean Quinn is anxious to highlight the anger in some parts of the community about how he was treated by the new executives. The locals are also very angry about what they've done to me, throwing me out the gate, giving me nothing, sacking me. They're very, they're very, very angry. But do, you, do you genuinely think, Sean, that they're angry to the extent that they would set cars on fire set factories on fire and abduct and torture a man. Do well, you genuinely in your heart of heart think well, that you, that is the it, caliber of the people that live around here? I don't think so, no. So but where is it coming from? Well, you ask, you tell me. The Quinn Company story is turbulent, complicated, and Sean Quinn wasn't the only one to lose out. So did other local businesses over the years, and some of those had connections to both dangerous criminal networks and militant republicanism. But I think somebody with a high AQ would know that Sean Quinn is not a real fool. And that he would know if something like what happened to Kevin Lunny happened, that he would, people would be looking in his direction. But I know that. So unless they consider me a real idiot, there's no way that I could allow that to be done in my name. Quinn tells us that the Kevin Lunny affair has finally put paid to his ambitions to retake the throne. You're a man that likes winning. Have you resigned yourself to the fact that you have lost this one? Oh, that yeah. it is over? Oh yeah, it's fine. It's no problem. Are you sure you have? I'm telling you that, I have, that a month ago, I had still ambitions to go back into those offices and sort out Quinn Group. A month ago? A month ago, not today. And what's changed in Kevin, a month? Kevin Lunny. Kevin Lunny. We spoke People to People um, can say whatever they want about me, but I don't want to be seen as uh, being the beneficiary of abuse or of what, criminal, criminal activity. Holy Spirit, whatever the reasons behind Kevin Lunny's abduction, it speaks to a criminal subculture that still exists in these parts. A subculture forged during the Troubles, connected to militant republicanism, alive and kicking along the Brexit border.